Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, time for another update. Uh, it's kind of nice that we have two this week. Um, I basically had the week off. Uh, unfortunately, I was single parenting it, and so I didn't get as far as I wanted. But that's okay. Uh, spending time with your kids is not a not a problem, right? So um, anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so first of all, we've been working uh, hard on the roof section. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm repairing some breakthrough on the carbon fiber, uh, getting the uh, surfaces that are going to be seen the most the flattest I possibly can. Uh, we're also uh, up here uh, taking out some bumps and warbles uh, by filling in with a little bit of epoxy. That way it'll sand nice and flat. And you can kind of see what we're going after in the end, right? So that's what we're going after uh, when we sand it all off and then clear coat it. Um, this is a pretty complicated part, so it's uh, taken quite a while. There's a lot of sand, coat, sand, coat, but that's okay because then we can get things like this done on the sail panels where we've got them already cleared up. So here you can see uh, the sail panels that are already been uh, done in carbon fiber and then clear coated. So uh, obviously we have some issues with uh, little things there that we're gonna have to sand down and hit it with another coat of clear. Uh, there's a few slight waves in the surface, but we can again, take that down uh, and uh, solve those types of problems. But it's looking pretty good. Um, the weave looks nice. My only complaint is you can see some of those little bubbles in there. Um, and that's probably why in the future we'll uh, go ahead and paint the car so that we can get it perfectly smooth and uh, get those bubbles out. Now I did use a heat gun to try to get the bubbles out. Um, but what I think the mistake was is um, <clears throat> instead of in using infusion epoxy, I used thin epoxy and uh, it doesn't wet the carbon fiber as well as the infusion stuff. And so as it's kind of sinking in, it uh, causes some bubbles to come out. So anyway, we're, we'll address that. We'll try to see if we can't do more panels uh, that are have that capability. Now over here, um, what we've done is we've actually put the pipes in here on our scoops so that we can hook that up to our air filters in our turbo, and then we've slathered them with some filler. Uh, I've been told to put it on thick and sand it thin. So uh, that's what we're doing here. But uh, so uh, what we've got left to do is we've got to sand these ends after they cure. And then we've got to fix some of these drips and runs and irregularities here. <clears throat> Once we do that, we can sand the whole thing down and then we can clear coat it and get it back on the car so anyway we're making progress it's slow but sure and uh, we're trying to uh, make things as nice as possible obviously this is all handmade and it's going to uh, get to a point where we can drive the car around and it won't be show quality but at least for now um, but it'll have the opportunity to get painted professionally if possible and do the the rest now let's move on to the windshield um, so what I've done is I did some research for Colorado and um, Colorado requires a non shattering material they do not say it has to be laminated safety glass so that means that here in Colorado we can at least use Lexan now the problem with polycarbonate or Lexan, Lexan being a brand name, is, is that it scratches real easy and headlights are typically made of polycarbonate. But there's a special polycarbonate you can get, it's more expensive, about twice the price. But not only is it UV uh, resistant, but it is also scratch resistant. Um, now it's not as good as glass, obviously, but we're not going to be driving this vehicle around a lot in the rain, so I'm not too concerned about that. I've also reached out, uh, as I said before, to a couple other companies that do uh, custom windows. They are prohibitively expensive. 
uh, because you have to do all the tooling and everything for uh, getting a custom window. So I think for now we're going with Lexan um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, after we get the, the roof uh, finished, I'm gonna straighten up some of the electrical and then we're gonna tackle this big boy right here. So uh, the rear engine cover will be next, um, followed by some of the other body panels uh, here on the sides. So we'll do the doors, we'll do the scoop inserts, we'll do the rear uh, quarter panels. Uh, so anyway, as you can see, we have a whole lot to do. Um, but again, these panels will be a little bit easier because they're not as complicated as that roof. That roof has got a lot of ins and outs, a lot of surfaces, a lot of curves. Um, so we're taking on some of the more uh, difficult parts right now. And then uh, when we take on the uh, engine cover, uh, that should be a little more straightforward because there's less curves on that and more flat parts. So that should be easier to done. <laughs> Famous last words, right? So a uh, quick update on what we've been doing this week. Uh, so we uh, are getting pretty close. Um, another big shout out and uh, thanks again to my buddy Jason Connell uh, who came out on Monday and helped me do some of the lion's share of the sanding and you saw that in the last update. Um, hopefully I'll see him again soon because apparently he likes sanding and I do not. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And uh, we'll see you again next time.